Hey guys, Mr. B here. Hopefully you're enjoying your long weekend. Um, we have school tomorrow. Good stuff. Um, all right, so uh, we're doing a unit right now on rational numbers, and of course it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense if we did a unit on rational numbers without actually knowing what a rational number is. Well, um, your book gives a pretty uh, complicated definition, so I sort of simplified it up a little bit for you. Um, a rational number basically is any number that can be written as a fraction. So you might be thinking, well, can't we write any number as a fraction? Well, in fact, we cannot write any number as a fraction, and we'll get to that just in a second. Um, but there are lots of numbers that we can write as fractions. For example, um, integers can be written as fractions. Let me write that down. No, I spelt integers wrong earlier, so maybe I'll, this gives me my chance to redeem myself. Hopefully that's right. Um, integers are fraction, or can be written as fractions. Negative 2 divided by 1, that's a fraction, okay? Um, and we talked about, a lot of people always ask, is a 0 an integer? Yes, absolutely it is. Uh, whole numbers. Whole numbers, so like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's an overlap here between integers and whole numbers, obviously. Um, natural. Those are all numbers that can be written as fractions. Now, of course, fractions themselves, we already know are rational numbers, like 1 half, 1 over 4, 3 over 4, 3 eighths, whatever. Um, but you might be asking questions, well, how do I know if a decimal can be written as a fraction? Because not all decimals can be written as fractions. For example, the most famous example would be pi. But anyway, um, a decimal can be written as a fraction, or a decimal is irrational when it either terminates or ends. So an example of that would be like 1.5. 0 0.125, um, 0 0.75, and you, anything that just ends, all of a sudden it stops, there's no numbers that follow, that's it. That's a rational number. We can write that as a fraction. Okay, we can write that as a fraction. And the second example, or the second, uh, when a decimal is a rational number, the second case is when it repeats with a pattern. So, for example, 1.3333 so on and it keeps repeating three or two point four five four five continued on forever those repeat with a pattern so there's some distinct pattern that just keeps repeating over and over again well um you might have it figured out already but a number or a decimal is not a rational number or something that we might call irrational not rational irrational is when it repeats with no pattern so for example uh, irrational number is a number that is a numbers is a number that repeat that continues with no pattern. So the best example of that is um, is pi, really. Three point one four one five nine something 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 forever, no pattern. We don't know what the last digit is. It continues on forever. I have no idea what the last digit is. Okay, um, neither does anybody. So it just doesn't have a pattern. So that's not a rational number. Any non-perfect square, root 2. This number, should, this definition should sort of look familiar to you because this is the same criteria as when is a number a perfect square, right? A number is a perfect square. When we take the square root, it terminates or it repeats with a pattern. Or a number is not a perfect square when it continues on with no pattern. So, like, it's very similar to the definition we used in Unit 1 for determining perfect squares. Root 3 is another one. Root 5. Why did I skip root 4? Well, root 4 is a perfect square. Square root of 4 is 2, which is a rational number. Can be raised in a fraction. 2 over 1. All right, so hopefully that clears up the definition of a rational number. Um, again, it's not overly complicated. Your book made it a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. But a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. A decimal is a rational number when it terminates, ends, or it repeats with a pattern. Okay, all right, let's give an example of what type of question you might uh, find on a test or assignment or midterm final exam. What is a rational number between negative 2.1 and negative 2.2? These are both rational numbers, of course. I really think the easiest way to tackle these problems, guys, is visualize a number line. And if you're having trouble visualizing a number line, just make one. Um, so I got negative 2.2 over here negative 2.1, okay? 
Um, so the easiest thing to do now, I think, if you're sort of like, uh, right now, if it's me, some people might be saying, well, I can pick a number out between there, uh, this and this. That's not easy for everybody. So what I might uh, suggest to you, if you still can't find a number now, is divide this up into 10 different spaces. So um, I'm going to try. Hopefully I can, well, I should do this. Uh, now I'll just break it up in 10 different spaces. It's not even. That's okay. Just a rough sketch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Alrighty, so um, I broke this up into 10 different spaces. So if I want to, let me just count over one space. So I'm at negative 2.1. So I go over one space. I'm at negative 2.1. One, okay. Negative 2.12. Negative 2.13. So let me just write that one down. Negative 2.13. Negative 2.14. Negative 2.15. Negative 2.16. Negative 2.17. Negative 2.18. Negative 2.19. And then negative 2.20 or 2.2. Okay. So, um, by able dividing this guy up into tenths, one tenths, um, I enabled myself to be able to find something that's in between. Okay, so um, that's basically all you have to do. Now there could be a different scenario here where you got fractions or something like that, um, but for the most part, you can draw a number line, and if you got fractions, you can change fractions to decimals or mixed numbers, so they're easier to put on a number line. If it's not, if it's a non-calc. And I suggest mixed numbers. You can probably do that in your head. If it's a calculator section, change it to decimals, plot it on a number line, done, done. Just pick it out, okay? So hopefully this helps, guys. If you got any more questions, any more requests for types of these problems, I'll certainly give them a shot and maybe make a video. All right. Good luck with your studying, guys. I'll see you in class.